You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Hey, this is Tony from the XG Talk Show. We've got John, pre-runner 1982, here today. He's going to talk to us about uh, the Day of the Dirt Adventure. This is a little trek across Oklahoma. And, uh, well, John, what kind of things are people going to hear on the interview? A lot of Jeeps, a lot of dirt roads, and some of Oklahoma's forgotten histories. Great statehood schools, old townships, cemeteries buried in high grass, train trestles, old bridges. A lot of good times, family events, and a good picture opportunity. So watch for the bonus episode, Day of the Dirt, from the XJTalkShow.com. Well, we haven't done an interview in a while, and I'm uh, glad to say that uh, we're uh, doing one today. It is going to be from uh, John. You know him as pre 1982 over on xgtalk.com, and he also is a contributor on xgtalkshow.com to our radio com tech segments. So uh, John does this little thing uh, for a few years now. He'll tell us uh, exactly how long here in a second. Uh, called Day of the Dirt, which is a, a fun family thing to do in uh, your off-road vehicle. And, uh, well, here's John. I'll let him explain all this to you, and we'll just have a conversation about it. All right. Thanks, Tony. As uh, Tony said, my name is John, and I um, go by Pre Runner 1982. I've got a 93 two-door Jeep Cherokee, mostly stock. And uh, as he said, I put on a uh, event uh, at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. And um, as I like to put it, it's um, the back road tour of Oklahoma's forgotten history. This is the third year I've done it. I actually had this planned, uh, not this particular event, but this all started about five years ago when uh, I decided there had to be something to go look at, uh, not necessarily wheeling, but uh, just to get away for a little while and uh, found old towns and old bridges and old cemeteries and a lot of uh, pre-statehood or early statehood things to go explore. And I connected them as uh, best I could with all the dirt roads that I could find. And I uh, came up with it a bit, but unfortunately at the time, I didn't have any Jeep friends. And uh, as I say, you don't want to go out alone. And I uh, just kind of held on to the idea for a while until I found a local Jeep group and uh, put it out there and got a uh, pretty good response and held the first uh, event October 13th, 2012. And I had a total of 15 Jeeps. Well, let's uh, skip ahead almost three years. And this year I had a hundred Jeeps. And, um, this happens around central Oklahoma. This year, we um, ventured through Payne County, which is where Stillwater, Oklahoma is. And that's actually where this uh, year's event started. We uh, gathered in Stillwater at a um, local home improvement store because, well, frankly, they had the biggest parking lot. And I actually had about 140 or so people say they were coming this year. So I had to, uh, <laughs> well, you know, find I was just going to hold all of us. <laughs> I was just going to say 15 is a pretty good number. Uh, I mean, for the first year, that sounded like a, a really great turnout. Did that surprise you having, uh, that many people show up first year? Um, yeah, actually I was content with having, you know, five or six, just anybody but me to go with. Right. But, uh, I was content with 15 and uh, next year we had, I think 43, and the following year, we had uh, the following event, we had 75, and it's continued to get bigger. So is this just a, a matter of uh, like a, low, a line of lemmings where everybody follows the, the lead lemming, or is there some communication uh, throughout the – I mean, is it kind of like uh, like you're flying an airplane and the, uh, the captain, you, gets on the radio and says, and if you look out to your left, you see the Washington Monument. <laughs> I've tried that, but unfortunately with that many vehicles, it's just um, not everybody can hear. It's hard to communicate front to back, at least uh, with a CB radio it is. Right. And that's what most uh, most people use. But the last couple of years, I have had a uh, at least one ham radio operator in the, in the group, which uh, it certainly helps. Um, last year, he was at the back, and we had no problems communicating. This year, we actually split into two convoys. I'm expecting to have close to 140 people. I just didn't want to try to uh, <laughs> that stretch be, that line of jeeps through yeah. the, the county. Just remember to turn your lights on. Everybody thinks it's a funeral procession. <laughs> that did happen. <laughs> that car stopped for us. Took us a minute to figure out why are they stopping, and then it finally dawned that the, they think we're a funeral of jeepers. <laughs> I guess. Oh, that's great. But uh, we uh, we met in Stillwater about nine o'clock on April 11th, Saturday. And um, invaded the parking lot, rolled out probably 9.45-ish or so, 
and got a few miles out of town and that's when we split into two convoys and this year the route um, usually it's from one point to another and then we end and split from there this year i made it a circle so we were able to one convoy go one way one convoy to go the other way and i crossed somewhere on the other side and, uh, the the information is going to be from my point of view and the, the events that are the places we stop are going to be in the order that, uh, that I saw them. Mm -hmm. frankly, I'm the one doing it. So, um, but we headed out of, out of there and uh, headed North. And our first stop was to an old school. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find any information as far as what, uh, what the name of the school was, but I did find out it was built in 1910 and surprisingly was about 3,500 square feet, which, for a school that early in this part of the country is huge. It looks to be probably four rooms on bottom and maybe two upstairs. Mm -hmm. A big gymnasium behind it. It was just uh, must have served a very large community area. And that's just an absolutely humongous school for for that time frame. I'm surprised uh, that that 3,500 square foot it had a gymnasium. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound large enough. I think my house is about 2,500 square feet. So <laughs> the gymnasium's bigger than the school is. Oh, okay. I thought that included the gym, the, the gym. Okay. That no, makes sense. No, it, was, it was, yeah, completely separate. And, uh, apparently the uh, landowner, cause they live between the school and the gymnasium, um, may have gotten a little scared. I didn't see it, but I heard reports that she was on her front porch on her phone. <laughs> the figure she was probably calling the uh, county sheriff. They never showed up, at least at that point. And uh, we had to be careful, though. We didn't want to get too close because the school was guarded by a llama. By a what? A llama. Oh, a llama. A llama. <laughs> I thought you said a llama. I was going, okay, there's something in Oklahoma I'm not aware of. Maybe this is the Oklahoma Bigfoot or something. <laughs> by a llama. And. Uh, he ended up being pretty nice. The kids played with him, and um, but uh, yeah, he didn't know what to think with all those people out there. So that must have been uh, at, at least ten people uh, said, "Tina, come eat your food, you stupid <laughs> fat pig." <laughs> there had to have been some uh, some good llama jokes. So when you get to these places, I I'm assuming that you uh, dismount and everybody, uh, that wants to, uh, gets out of the Jeep. Maybe even if they're hanging around the Jeep, they, they get out and look around, maybe stretch the legs, or is it strictly a stay in the Jeep type thing? Or it just depends. Depends on the, on the place that we're at. Some of them, they're just wasn't any room. And uh, we just kind of drove through slowly, take pictures as you go by. Um, about half of them we were able to stop at. And uh, some people get out and take pictures and uh, really look. Some people just get out and uh, talk to others and make it a social, a little social stop. Sure. Now, does everybody bring a Jeep, or do they just come in what they what they have, what they feel comfortable with, maybe what they can uh, have that uh, will fit the the number of people that they have uh, that they're bringing? Because it is a family event after all. Right. It's preferable that they bring a Jeep, just because that's um, it's hosted by a Jeep group, basically. Mm -hmm. But uh, not a requirement. We've had non Jeep vehicles in the past. Um, one year we had a Chevy Equinox, a Chevy pickup. This year we had a Toyota Tundra tag along with us. Of course, he was the brunt of a lot of jokes. As far as <laughs> I bet. Getting stuck and needing to be pulled out. But, uh, oh, no. Uh, we, we, we won't kick people out for showing up in a non Jeep vehicle. No, of course not. About friends and family and just getting out. So. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now this is, I would assume this is uh, a mix of model Jeeps like, uh, uh, Cherokees, uh, Wranglers, um, CJs, maybe, uh, any, any, any of the original military Jeeps ever made the run? I don't think we've had any of the, uh, military Jeeps or the early CJ, you know, two or threes, but, uh, we do occasionally have a couple CJ fives, a good handful of CJ sevens. Uh, of course, a lot of, uh, Wranglers, TJ and JK. And uh, the the uh, XJ crowd, the unibody crowd, has uh, really increased over the years as well. Good. You know, the unibody. We are one with the body. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what would be the most fascinating part of the trip? I mean, certainly uh, seeing uh, 75 uh, Jeeps in a parking lot would be fascinating. But as far as going down uh, through these uh, dirt road uh, trails. What do you think would be the the most interesting? Would it? Uh, did we already discuss it with the school, or is there some other 
uh, aspect of this that maybe, uh, I guess cemeteries are kind of cool too. The ones, the old and forgotten ones are, Mm -hmm. um, to me, as far as the event itself, um, I really enjoy just seeing the convoy Jeeps when we start going up and down the hills, just as far as you can see, there's nothing but Jeeps on the road behind you. It's just, I love it. What kind of comments do you get? What kind of comments do you get from people that, uh, uh, either, uh, their first year or, you know, second year that they've done this and, and they see that many Jeeps all together like that, or even about the route that you take, what, what, what was some of the uh, uh, positive comments that you've received? I really get a lot of positive comments on that. And I'm, I'm, it blows my mind for one of those many people want to even show up to this event, but, uh, for a non wheeling event, um, it seems to be the, the most fun they've had in an event they really look forward to next year. So how long is the, the trip in, uh, in miles? I try to keep it around 50 to 80 miles. Um, it gets a little long, it gets to be a lot of driving and, uh, for the women, it gets to be, um, as far as a bathroom break goes, it gets mm-hmm. to be a long time. And we did have a bathroom break this year, but that turned out to be rough because there's so many vehicles and so many people that it took longer than expected. Yeah, McDonald's wants everybody to buy something. You can't buy one fry and then have 150 people use the bathroom. So uh, good good uh, tip there. <laughs> right. And there's been years where we didn't have a bathroom stop, and that was probably one of the biggest complaints. So I, I try to work it in when I can. So f- between 50 and 80 miles, and now I know that you're not uh, you know, doing highway speeds through this. What kind of time frame are we talking about? Uh, uh, hours, I would assume. This year, because we only stopped at half the places, um, I think it took us about seven hours um, to complete the trip. It's taken us, I've, in the previous year, on the longer trips, it's taken us you know, closer to eight or nine hours. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but uh, getting back to my other question as far as what is the, the, the most interesting, uh, and, and I don't know if you go the same trail every, every year, so I would think that there's probably some uh, aspect uh, like that school or uh, something that uh, everybody thinks is the most fascinating thing. Do you have one of those uh, s- specific um, places that uh, everybody likes to, you know, you get the most comments on, the most clicks, I guess you would see on oh, clicking the camera the most? Um, there are separate routes. In fact, I've got three routes um, right now. For the most recent, I think my favorite was the old um, railroad trestle the only thing left was the support structures none of the wood was left but the the brick structure that elevated the the track up above the road um, was really neat we unfortunately it was one of the drive through areas but since i pre-ran the route i uh, was able to get out and take some good pictures and explore and uh, it's not something you see every day you know, mm-hmm. we've, we've i've come across a lot of schools and a lot of homesteads and cemeteries and stuff, but that's the first time that uh, we've had a, a old railroad trestle. So, um, and we didn't discuss this and, and it, maybe it hasn't happened yet, but if you keep this up, I bet you it does. Have you been contacted by any news service or magazine or anybody that wants to do a ride along and maybe do a story on your, uh, your trek? I mean, I would think that if you've got, uh, 75 Jeeps driving down the road, it's going to attract some attention. Um, no, I haven't had anybody contact me. Now I do do an article for a magazine, uh, because, well, he's local and he's been on the, on the routes and uh, he approached me after the first one that he was on and uh, requested that I write an article and I've done so every, uh, every year for him and uh, working on one for him right now. So, uh, where is that? Uh, is that published online, published on paper? Yes. Where, where can people see that if they wanted to see it? It, it is online. It's C. 4x4, four four, I believe it's c4x4magazine.com or c4x4.com. And that C is in Charlie, right? Correct. Okay. So, uh, oh, that's great. I, I, actually, after I asked that question and you mentioned uh, writing the article, I remember you chastising yourself on xjtalk.com uh, chat saying, oh, I got to write the article. <laughs> <laughs> Something else that you had to do along with this. So this is a lot of work and you don't have any personal uh, financial or, or personal gain of, uh, on this thing. It's just something you wanted to do and you wanted some, uh, some people to go along with you really just because you're not supposed to go off, uh, into the, uh, the wilderness by yourself because things happen to Jeeps, uh, even if when they're on the highway. So, uh, this is, uh, 
like I said, this isn't anything other than just a fun thing that you came up with, a uh, fun idea, to, to uh, things to go out and do with the family. Right, exactly. Um, no entry fee, no anything like that. I, it's just all for fun and to spend time with like-minded individuals. Was there, w- was there any other aspect of this thing that, um, that we haven't covered that you wanted to go over? No, no. Uh, we'll kind of talk about some of the, some of the uh, places that, uh, that we visited. Like I said, uh, we went through some pretty small cemeteries. Um, that was pretty neat. Of course, I always look for, like I've said before, look for the, uh, the veteran headstones. Being a veteran myself, I do like to, uh, to look for those. And uh, one, one area that uh, everybody really liked, and it's probably next to the railroad trestle, probably one of my favorite stops, is called Ingalls, I-N-G-A-L-L-S. And it's the site of a gun battle between the Dalton Doolin gang and um, the U.S. Marshals. And it's said to be even more fierce than the um, OK Corral, the shootout at the OK Corral. And uh, ended up killing a couple of the marshals and even some of the townspeople. Now, give me a time frame on that. I'm thinking 20s, but that sounds like it might be earlier. 1893. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. They've, so, still, they've got um, a building that looks like the hotel and the saloon and... Um, I think the recreations, because they do do a reenactment of the shootout there as well. But uh, I don't think they're original buildings, but they certainly um, make neat places to to take pictures because the fronts anyway do look uh, uh, of the time period. Mm-hmm. So uh, just crossed my mind, does anybody bring any metal detectors out there? Because I would imagine there might be some fun stuff, uh, uh, especially around uh, those old buildings. You know, um, I've never had anybody bring one. We usually don't stay in places too awfully long to um, to do a whole lot of searching. That but makes the, sense. It definitely would be would be neat to have one. To take along. I'd be interested to see what uh, what you could find. So, do you uh, have the route published in case people wanted to go off and, and do what we're talking about, where they could actually uh, go the route, uh, perhaps with themselves and maybe another vehicle, and uh, take their metal detector out there and go find things? Uh, no, not yet. I don't have it published. I have uh, sent it to a few people um, who showed interest in going back and stopping at some of the places that we just drove through. Mm-hmm. No, I don't uh, don't have it published. going to save it in my files and uh, resurrect it again, you know, a couple years or so and, and rerun it and now, do it all over again. Now, is this an annual event or do you do it whenever the mood hits you or... Uh, how often do you do it? And if it is an annual event, uh, is it done uh, about the same time every year? It is an annual event. As far as the time frame, um, I either do it in the spring around March or April or in the fall around October. There's not really a set date. It's just kind of whenever I can get time to create a new route because it is pretty time consuming mm-hmm. to uh, you know find the places and then try to connect them all. And I spend a lot of time looking at various historic websites and um, cemetery re- um, websites and maps and stuff, trying to find all the right routes and locations of these um, little known areas. Do you actually drive these routes before you go out uh, and take everybody with you? Or are you as surprised uh, as the rest of the, 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 the people? The very first one I, I did, I did not free run it. And um, I, from then on, I have. I like to have the familiarity with knowing where I need to turn and I spend less time looking at the map that way and I can kind of enjoy it a little more. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out where I'm supposed to be going. I already kind of have that idea. So is this a um, is this something that you can program on the GPS and, and just follow along with that or do you actually have to, to pull the map out? If I had a GPS, I could probably do it that way. Okay, I got you. Oh, I do, I do it by map. Yeah, I thought maybe uh, maybe the the roads were so rural rural yeah, that they didn't show up on the GPS. So, um, thought I would uh, check that aspect of it. But if somebody else has a GPS and they had the route, uh, they could. Uh, I mean, it's pretty simple for them. Uh, they can just follow the jeep in front of them. Well, you could really have fun with people driving in a big circle, you know. <laughs> One of the other neat things uh, this year was because we did split it to come was, like I said, we did meet on the other side. And, uh, that was pretty neat seeing the other group coming at you. It was probably the longest Jeep wave. <laughs> yeah, my arm's getting tired. How many times <laughs> have you heard that? 
So, uh, do you have a navigator? I mean, uh, do you take uh, uh, your spouse and the kids with you, or, or are you Lone Ranger? My oldest daughter has been to almost every one of them, and she's usually my navigator. I bet she, you that's a lot of fun. I bet she really enjoys that uh, pitching in, especially with that many people uh, uh, trailing behind. I'm sure yeah, the whole family thinks it's a thinks you're a pretty big deal, even if they don't tell you. <laughs> I don't know about all that. <laughs> But uh, we, <laughs> something I meant to touch on was we did get pulled over this year, which is another first time um, for the event. And uh, ended up being, he was a pretty nice guy. He just wanted to see what we were all doing out there and you know, make sure we weren't tearing up his roads. And uh, He ended up catching up to the other convoy later on in the day and actually got out and talked with them while they were stopped. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, pretty interesting to see the blue lights come on and a whole convoy get pulled over. <laughs> Well, I, I, I guess I'm kind of confused. What business was it of his for, with people driving down the road legally? Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Um, I think he was just using that as an excuse to see what else was going on. Ah, and of course. If, if the lady at the, at the old schoolhouse with the llama called the sheriff on us, they probably already had an idea that we were out there. Well, hope sh- hopefully she didn't lie on you guys and say anything about uh, llama molestation or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I guess that is kind of a scary thing to see. Uh, so, with this, yeah. or, or, I'm sure you know which police uh, group or precinct uh, that this was. Any plans on contacting them next year so that you don't have to go through this? Or perhaps this is a, an, an interesting story for your uh, the your followers uh, to tell. Well, like you said, we weren't out there doing anything wrong, so I don't feel any need to contact them. We're using the road for its purpose to get from point A to point B. Yeah, I agree. It just happens to be that there was, you know, a hundred of us. <laughs> well, I think I, uh, I think I actually suggested, and 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 you shouldn't do this, but I think I actually suggested that the, every time you get pulled over, that the, before you start, you tell everybody in the convoy surround the police officer with your jeeps. <laughs> Circle the wagon, so to speak. Just envelop him or her <laughs> around the patrol car. Yes, officer, how can we help you? And actually, if you guys could all speak at the same time saying the same thing, that'd really be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That'd be funny to see what he would uh, <laughs> what his conversation with uh, dispatch would be on that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy hell. <laughs> <laughs> back up. Send yeah. back up. Send back up. Oh, wait a minute. I'm the only one. <laughs> All of them. I'm sure it was a very small uh, office that uh, that that police officer was out of, wasn't it? Uh, the sheriff. I don't know how many uh, sheriffs are in the county. I don't think they could have gotten to us fast enough. <laughs> I don't think there was enough of them to arrest everybody. So, what kind of weather do you, have you uh, had? Uh, I, I would think that dreary would be interesting, at least from uh, uh, some of the lighting uh, of the, uh, especially the older places, make it look more spooky. Uh, have you had any kind of rainy, dreary weather? Have you had uh, uh, just sunny weather? Uh, is it hot? Is it cold? People, windows up, down? Um, yes. We've had everything but snow, I think. Um, it's kind of been nicknamed the day of mud on more than one occasion. <laughs> and it's gotten rained out once or twice. And, uh, this year, it rained in the morning, and we were hoping to, because it, it's nice to knock down the dust. Yeah. that many jeeps and you know it's nice to have, be able to have the top and doors off but i've seen people step out and they're like covered head to toe in red dust and uh, so it's nice to keep the, the dust knocked down a little bit and that's what we were hoping for and when my convoy started out that morning it was kicking up dust and kind of disappointed with that but when we came across the convoy headed the other direction they were all covered in mud so it gave us something to <laughs> uh to look forward to i guess one side of the county got more rain than the other which got none obviously right but yeah we've nice and sunny and everything from like i said being rained out so so what does it take to be rained out a constant rain or uh you just know that if, if you get so many inches of rain is this not going to be a good idea to go out there because it's nobody likes 75 stuck dre- stuck <laughs> jeeps uh a constant rain um basically we're nobody wants to get out of the jeeps go look at the stop at that point what's the what's the point in stopping and going anywhere if nobody wants to get out and look at it. So how do you, how do you communicate that out? Do you have a, like an email list or, um, um, you don't call everybody, do you? 
No, I've never actually had an event be completely rained out. I've cut one short because of the rain, but actually canceling an event, I've never done that. Gotcha. It's, al- it's always been fine at the start. A little dreary and, and a little overcast and sprinkling and stuff is fine. Mm-hmm. But, uh, one year, it, the end of the event, I went ahead and cut short. Excellent. Weather. So as far as communication goes, uh, I guess you've tried the CB thing. Uh, how does that work out? Does everybody seem to have a, a CB or you just really can't communicate because not everybody has a way to receive what you're saying? Um, a lot of them have CBs. There are some that don't, but uh, most of them do. And various um, states of install, you know, <laughs> some people can't really transmit very far or receive very, very much. And it makes communicating very, at any great distance, very difficult. But I mean, a, a, line, a, of, a line of vehicles, if you can't hit receive somebody in a line of vehicles, that's got to be well under a mile long. <laughs> you got some serious CB problems. Right. Right now when we're, when we're rolling, the convoy stretches out a little bit more, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, hasn't been good with CB. It's, you can communicate within small groups, basically, mm-hmm. but actually relaying information is, is doesn't work um, as much as you would think or I would have liked. Well, that's a shame, but I guess it is good from the standpoint that it gives you less things to do and, and more time to enjoy the scenery and uh, the time with your daughter and also navigating. Right, and I've, I've recruited uh, some ham radio operators to, to assist um, because I do like to know what's going on at the back, especially if we have somebody fall out or, you know, need repairs or whatever. Sure. I want to know what's going on. So I've been lucky the past couple of times to have um, a couple of ham radio operators that are also Jeepers helped me out in that. Um, unfortunately, this last event, I stuck him with the other convoy thinking that uh, it'd be nice to, you know, check in and know where they are and everything. But... Um, Apparently, the spirits of the cemeteries didn't appreciate me being out there and bringing all these people to invade their uh, their quiet time because my radio did not work. Hmm. Within, I could see the guy, I could shout to the guy, but he could barely hear me, even on simplex, and I was running fifty watts. Interesting. I couldn't even hit the local repeater, which he could on his on his uh, handy talkie just fine. I could hit it. Yeah, well, those 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 uh, radio gremlins are just like Jeep gremlins. You never know uh, when they're you know you never know when they're going to pop up. So um, let's see. I was going to ask you a question, and I think oh, I the, the following Monday because he he lives in the same little town that I do. Um, the following Monday on the way to work, I hit him up, and everything was working fine. Of course, you could hear me just fine through the repeater all the way across town, and I haven't <laughs> had a problem since. Darn this thing! I don't know what it was. Yeah, of course. It, uh, only when you need it is uh, is the only problem. So uh, I know that uh, we've uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, ham radio on xgtalk.com, uh, and I know you've played around with uh, a uh, is it APRS or ARPS? I think it's APRS. APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System. So uh, I recently uh, got a, uh, a terminal node controller, TNC, and I've uh, been playing around a little bit with it myself. Any, uh, any thoughts on maybe uh, doing some uh, uh, APRS uh, f- for the trip? Um, if not, uh, um, certainly not for everybody, but uh, between you and uh, the other ham, our, our hams that are in the convoy? I actually was running APRS this year. Um, the other ham, his HT actually has APRS, but he just hasn't taken the time to set it up and play with it to have it operational. But, uh, I was running it just, uh, just for the fun of it, just to see what it would pick up and how much of the route would be, um, displayed on online. Yep. That would be a good way to, to keep up with folks. But, uh, of course it, you still have to do all the stuff with the, the multiple radios and, uh, uh, multiple antennas and etc. But just a just a thought that would be neat, uh, pretty neat to be able to keep up with uh, maybe uh, the back of the uh, uh, the back of the convoy or the uh, the separate convoy using that uh, yeah. uh, ham technology that uh, is all self contained. You don't have to go through anything else other than uh, the equipment that you brought. So yeah, that's kind of a neat deal. If I can um, get my hands on another TNC, I might uh, consider setting up a. Uh, easily dispatchable APRS unit that I can just throw in the back of the Jeep and slap that antenna on top, mag mount, and 
let them run it with my with my equipment. That way, they don't have to worry about getting their their own setup. All righty. Well, you mentioned uh, there was a, a few places uh, that uh, were memorable and uh, uh, of note. Was there anything else that you any other place that uh, pops into your mind that you want to tell us about? Well, um, we ended the the event this year at Kicker, and some people may not know um, Kicker, but they're big into the car audio. A lot of subwoofers and amplifiers. Oh yeah! And their world headquarters is actually in Stillwater, and one of the uh, employees happens to be in the Jeep group that I run with, and uh, so he hooked us up, and they opened up their world headquarters and their uh, demos and displays just for us, and uh, we all rolled in there, and uh, that was really neat that they did that for us and gave us a place to hold our closing ceremonies, where for um, Another first time for the Day of Dirt, I was able to give away some prizes. I had uh, 13 corporate sponsors this year and some private sponsors as well from the group who do things such as stickers and, and T-shirts and stuff. It uh, gave me a lot of stuff to give away, and that was fun. That, uh, that was fun. Just like a big-time deal, isn't it, where you get yeah. prizes and people show up? and <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, that's pretty good. So, uh, what do you got planned for the future? Any any additional things, new routes, um, any changes to what you're currently doing? I mean, I understand if you don't want to change it, it seems to be working fine the way it is. But, um, of course, I got to keep new routes coming. Um, unfortunately, to find new stuff, I've got to get farther and farther away from Oklahoma City metro area where I'm based. So, and uh, it takes time. It takes me over, about a year to make a new route um, just in my spare time, which unfortunately I don't have a whole lot of um, lately, but uh, yeah, new routes um, might try something new in the future. As far as with the convoys, depending on how many, how many people um, attend the event next year, we'll see how that goes. And of course, I hope uh, some new sponsors and, uh, give away some more stuff. This year, my sponsors were Full Wheel Drive Hardware, Blue Water LEDs, Rough Country, Super Lift, Full Metal Badges, Right Channel Radios, Fire Stick, um, Magnaflow, Rock Auto, Daystar, TerraFlex, Painless Wiring, and Pore 15 coatings, which do like bedliner and rust prevention mm -hmm. coatings, which we all know Jeeps need. So it, uh, it was fun. You know, John, uh, I don't know how you went about uh, gathering your sponsors uh, or if they just contacted you, but if you went about gathering them, you might want to try contacting some, some folks with, uh, with cameras or with a pencil that uh, could write a story on this because I have to, I have to feel that this would be a, a good uh, feel-good story, a good interesting uh, across, the, uh, across the state of Oklahoma or interesting things in Oklahoma which I would think there's uh, far few things. I mean, it's flat and got cows. And <laughs> if there's if there's something to do that's uh, that's fun, I'm sure people would love to to read or see it. Uh, I know that there was a uh, there was a Texas um, a group that did a, a kind of a Texas thing where they would go to small towns and and you know like showcase interesting things in Texas. I, I got a feel there's something like that in Oklahoma. You would think I've actually um, put the word out to a couple of the new stations just to see, you know, any interest there. And they kind of said, Oh, okay, thanks. And, <laughs> and that was it. But uh, no, I, I do all the work on my own, contacted all the sponsors. And, uh, said I do the article. I, I don't like to toot my own horn too much. So I'm not much on going out and saying, Hey, you really ought to come hang out with us. This is a great event. But, uh, as it continues to grow, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you get uh, 300 or 500 uh, and you got to do multiple days and all the rest of that, uh, <laughs> that stuff that goes along with it, uh, somebody's going to take notice. I just can't help but, like I say, I just can't help but think that this would be a really interesting story that uh, some videographer would uh, uh, put to good use, if, if, if nothing else, a good YouTube video that could, you know, gather a million hits. So I, I'm just surprised that we're not seeing something uh, now because uh, 75, 74, 75 Jeeps is a bunch. Right. Well, like I said, this year we had just over 100 Jeeps. And you'd think all those Jeeps driving through those little towns would get somebody 
<laughs> saying, what's going on? But, well, uh, a llama and a, and a sheriff uh, certainly <laughs> took notice. So uh, if, if somebody would like to, to join in or, uh, into this uh, Day of the Dirt uh, trek across uh, uh, Oklahoma, would uh, how would they go about uh, getting involved, uh, notification when it was going to happen, and uh, you know maybe uh, some advance notice as far as uh, if somebody that wasn't in Oklahoma wanted to uh, make the trip there and, and be a part of this? The best place would be to find Day of Dirt Adventure on Facebook. You can uh, contact me through there and uh, see all the pictures of not only this year's event, but the past events as well. Uh, and of course, Pre Runner 1982. You can find me on XJ Talk under that name or really any, any forum. If you come across that name, it's probably me. I'm on most of the Jeep forums. Great. Uh, so anything on Twitter or just uh, Facebook? Just Facebook. How about Google I Plus? I don't have time for Twitter. Uh, How about Google a, Plus? No, sir. A Facebook snob. I didn't know that. <laughs> I barely have time for that. So. <laughs> so people can contact you on Facebook, uh, Day of the Dirt Adventures. And uh, so uh, do you have a date for the next one, or is uh, are we a little too far out having you, since you just finished one up? A little too far out. I usually come up with the, the places in the route first before I set a date. I usually set it um, about three months ahead of time, about three months out. So uh, ballpark, it would be uh, either uh, April next year or uh, September, October next year. So people right. could, could, could put it on their calendar and, and go, oh, you know, I need to start checking out this. Uh, I mean, they can go over there and, and like your page or uh, uh, friend it or, or whatever, the, however, however your Facebook is set up and uh, monitor it that way. But uh, if they just want to put it on the calendar, uh, you would probably wouldn't have anything before April, I would think. Right. Usually late March, early April. Okay. So March or April. And April. You know, like you said, September, October. Right. I may, I may bring up an old route for October of this year just to do something. And uh, run one that I've already have all the, the plans for just to make it easy. Yeah, I'm actually surprised you don't run the same route uh, a couple of years and then uh, go through all that uh, hard work for the uh, the following year. But I know it's uh, sometimes it's hard to keep people happy, uh, especially if they've uh, done it, uh, done their old route all the time. So, right. uh, so it, uh, how many returns do you think you get? Uh, is it uh, you see the same people that you saw the the prior year, or do you see uh, new, uh, complete new faces, uh, every year. No, I've got a lot of, uh, cronies, so to speak, that have come on almost every one of them. Even the ones that, uh, are the old routes that I rerun, they still come on it. Even though they've already been on it once or twice, they still come, um, keep coming back. And I appreciate that. And, uh, it means a lot. I'm surprised. Um, I know I've said it more than once, but I thought I was weird when I first came up with this idea, going to look at old stuff. You know, who wants to go look at old, broken down, worn out stuff? And uh, but I've gotten a great reaction, and it makes great, great pictures, great time for the family and friends and just hanging out with uh, other Jeepers. Excellent. Well, John, I really appreciate you taking uh, your time today and uh, meeting with us and having this conversation. Uh, and, uh, again, if you, you want to contact John or just keep up with the Day of the Dirt, uh, just go to uh, Facebook and Day of the Dirt Adventures. And um, you can always uh, come over to xgtalk.com and see what kind of uh, things are going on with uh, John there as well. I know you posted up a bunch of pictures over there uh, recently. Uh, yeah. And uh, so. Uh, full, full right up and um, close to 100 pictures. Excellent. Um, and a video. Oh, great. Yeah, I haven't even been over there to look at it yet. And uh, I've, I've got all these things going on uh, interviews to make and I'll, I'll, I will mention John forced me to do this interview. He's like, Hey, you want to talk about this or not? <laughs> he even set the, the date and time. And that's what you got to do with me sometimes. As you can tell, I enjoy this stuff. It's just, uh, the sitting down and doing it that, uh, uh is usually the, the hard thing for me. So John, I, I really appreciate it. Great interview. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. The four by four radio network.